Well, good evening, my friends. Looks like the sun came out just in time for our, our worship. Uh, but I'm glad that you're here as we continue to study the, the Word of God, and we're going to be getting into uh, what is uh, a valuable, but I know sometimes uh, contentious conversation about what is the Sabbath and what does that mean today. But let's remember the purpose of the Sabbath is one to be of joy, and, and I pray that that our, our conversations, as, as they usually are, you know, are a, a wonderful source of, of joy for us as well. Uh, but before we begin our worship, let's take this moment and pray. Our Father, you are in heaven high and lifted up, higher than our highest dreams and thoughts. Holy is your name. This is what scripture declares. Besides you, there is no one else, for you alone are our God. So we pray that as we study, as we, as we do this work of continually preparing our hearts and our minds to be the servants of your kingdom, we ask that you would receive us, receive us into the, that kingdom of your anointed son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we bear. Amen. Now, my friends, what, what are songs that have been meaningful to you in your faith? Sienna? Four six two. All right, four six two in the Grace Altar hymnal. Ah, four six two, Amazing Grace. That is a classic. It's well chosen. All right. Well, when you find it, let's stand together. Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believe the Lord has promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures through many dangers toils and snares i have already come tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, Weep no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. That is a great song for many good reasons. What else can we be singing this evening? Debbie? 405. Four oh five. 
I serve a risen Savior. All right, I think I know how this one starts. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever people say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And every time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, tell me Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, Lift up your voice and sing Eternal hallelujahs To Jesus Christ our King The hope of all who seek Him The help of all who find No other is so loving So good and kind He lives, He lives Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. All right. Thank you, my friends. That is great singing. Good choices of songs. That is a good, good one to remember as we are getting real close to Easter. That's a beautiful song. So now, if you would, uh, turn in the Grace Psalter hymnals to page 909 as we're going to be looking at Lord's Day 38. I know... Many of you have these, these nice maroon books that have the, the verses printed out. But tonight we're going to be th thinking about that fourth commandment, about, about the Sabbath day and what that means. Uh, but as we, we start with this catechism, but then look to God's word, let's take a moment and, and pray that, that he leads us towards truth and wisdom. Father, our desire is to honor you as you seek to be honored. And we know that throughout history that you have asked the Sabbath day to be a major part of what this worship looks like. And we admit there have been a lot of different interpretations and understandings to what that means. But as we study Scripture, let Scripture be what guides us. And let us become more and more faithful every time we open your word. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'll read for us what is just the, the only question and answer this week. Uh, one, 103, I'll read the question. We can give the answer together. What is God's will for you in the fourth commandment? First, that the gospel ministry and education for it to be maintained, and that, especially on the festive day of rest, 
I regularly attend the assembly of God's people to learn what God's word teaches, to participate in the sacraments, to pray to God publicly, and to bring Christian offerings to the poor. Second, that every day of my life I rest from my evil ways. Let the Lord work in me through his spirit and so begin already in this life the eternal Sabbath. Okay, so if you were going to be discussing this Lord's Day with a friend, where in Scripture would you go? Sienna? Uh, which, which verse? Titus 1 5. Let's see, Titus 1 5. Ooh, I think you might be pulling from. Well, oh, there it is. Okay. Titus 1 5. The reason I left you in Crete was that you might straighten out what is left unfinished and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. Yeah, so, Russ, does that sound familiar to what we were talking about earlier? About the, you know, that, that we had, we had uh, Paul, he appointed elders in, in every town to help to oversee the, the teaching of the word. And we see that that's a, that's a, that's a vital role in, in the church of Jesus Christ, that there are... And we can go back to the second Timothy chapter two, verse two, lots of twos going on there. So the, the things that you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. And so we see this, this idea, like what is the role of the elders? The elders are the, are the ones who are responsible for the teaching of God's word. And, and so we see this, this major component of, of what is it that we do when we gather together? What is one of the, the pillars of what the Sabbath is about? It's about growing and, and celebrating our understanding of what God teaches in his word. And so, yeah, that's, and, and what, why, why is it important to have, have elders and not just any, any, anyone in the, in the church speaking, speaking about the Bible? What, what's, what's different between an elder and someone else in the church? Henny, do I see a half hand there? <laughs> yeah, I like that. So that you're thinking of like a like a quarterback that you, you have someone who's responsible for for calling the the plays. Now, does that mean that the quarterback is the the only important person on the team? No, and and often when you get an MVP at the end, you know. It might be that, that, you know, the receiver might be somebody else. There are many important people on the, on the team. But the team's not going to be very valuable if you don't have people who are making the call, namely, in this case, the quarterbacks. And so, yeah, so I think there's, there's a lot that we can, we can apply to that when, when we think of the church, that all believers are valuable. All believers are called to be educated in the Word of God and useful in, in proclaiming the Word of God, sharing the Word of God. But what is different about the elders from the other proclaimers of God's word is that the elders are those who've been, who have been identified as qualified and they have been given that responsibility to, you know, to, to teach and to, you know, to, 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 to set, the, set the guidelines on. This is how we read God's word. This is not how we read God's word, to hold each other accountable and, and, uh, and to trust that if we see the giftedness of, of this qualified man, then we are going to pray that this is someone that, that God has given to us, and we're going to we're going to put um, a heightened level of, of credence into what they have to have to say, because they're more valuable, no, but because we believe that God has called them to be a representative on His behalf, and if God has called these qualified men, um, then you know that they, they are going to be able to to lead us. In, in a way that others in the, in the church may, may not be able to do. I don't know, is that clear as mud? <laughs> yeah, because it's one of these things of, of going back to the idea of covenantal representation. We don't want it to be the elders are the only ones who understand the, the word of God. But at the end of the day, someone is going to bear the burden that if the word of God is not being taught rightly or well, some, the, the buck needs to stop somewhere, and that's with 
the elders. And so, you know, we, we tend to think of, of elders as, ah, these, these are the best of the best. It's like, not necessarily so. If, if they are gifted in God's word, that is it more so than others, then, you know, that, those are certainly people that we ought to have leading. But it really comes, it's almost more of a burden than, than it is a blessing to be an elder. So, elders, do you, do you feel a little bit of that burden on you? <laughs> That's right. Share it together. Yeah, older, wiser, better looking. You must be referring to, to yourself. You can't be referring to me on that one, I know. But, yeah. So, yeah, we want to, all of us be educated, but we, we do depend on the, those that, that God has qualified and placed before us. Cohen, I see your hand is up. Yeah. All right, so, uh, I, was, so I, caught, I caught you're you're reading that first part there, talking about that, you know that that the the Sabbath, uh, you know that we're, we're called to to maintain education, especially on this festive day of rest, that we regularly t- attend the assembly of God's people, and then what was the next part you're saying? Yeah, so uh, what, what do the pastors do as, as their day of rest? Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's a big conversation right there. And, uh, and so, you know, so a couple of the, the things that I, I would say on that is, is one is that the, the greatest source of our rest for the Sabbath day is a resting in the power of God's word. And so as, as a pastor, you know, I too am looking and trusting and, and growing in God's word. On, on Sundays along with, with others. And so um, I feel like that's a little bit of a cop-out because Sundays are also exhausting for, for me. Uh, but, but the truth, again, is that if, if we find our, our rest by coming to God's word, feasting on God's word, that, that there is a, a sense of edification that should be happening in the pastors as well as, as those in the pews. But also say that when, when we look at the, the history of, of of what the, the church looked like, and this gets a little back to what we were talking about earlier, uh, Russ, is that um, the, the church in the, those first few centuries until the time of Constantine were not this big, formal, public gathering that, w- that we see today. And, and the churches for the first few centuries looked more like the, the house churches that we see in, in other places in the world, where you, you would have people who would be regularly gathering together. They'd be gathering in, in people's homes, and that the, the elders were the ones who were responsible for overseeing the, the teaching of, of God's word. But when I've had a chance to be a part of, of house churches and other places of, of the world, you know, what it is is that you get people gathering together in homes and you know, they share a meal with each other and they're just sitting around and saying, hey, guess what I read in, in, in God's word this week? Isn't this amazing? That's incredible. I read this. And you, know, you get people who are, are sharing to, together. And you know, the, those who are the elders are not the ones who are coming with this big formal presentation where I'm trying to make sure I've, I've got my outline all neat and straight. It was just a, a gathering together and saying, look, isn't God's word amazing? Isn't Jesus Christ you know, uh, uh, our, our supreme savior? And it, it, there, there was less of that... Uh, Less, less of the pressure of a public presentation that, that would have been on, on pastors in those, those days. And so, not to say that what I'm doing here is, is a, a wrong thing, um, but there, there were ways in those days that there was more rest that were given to, to pastors. And so, so another, another, ta- uh, a, another caveat to it is, is, I know what we say to like people who are like doctors or nurses or firefighters or those who serve in in urgent capacity is that if you can't take a Sabbath on, on Sunday, make sure you are finding a, a day of rest and an opportunity to, to study God's word with others somewhere 
else throughout the, the week. But yeah, but as, as, a, as a pastor's kid, you definitely see a, a different side of, of Sundays. It can be a bit exhausting for us. Yeah, so good question. So uh, what, what else in Scripture can we look at for, for understanding what the Sabbath is about? Justin? Uh, Genesis 2-2. Two, two. Genesis 2-2? Two, two. All right. So Genesis 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, I didn't think it was, so I like it. You get, you get extra credit points. Genesis 2-2. Two, two. So I like where you're going with this. Two, two. All right. Well, I'll just read around it as well. I like context. So verse one. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. And by the seventh day, God finished the work that he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. All right. So why is that relevant? Yeah. Um, it actually is something that we put as something ahead of the law before we even made the Mosaic law. It's something that he had already stated before that. Yeah, this commandment is, is built on the, the verse that, that you brought our attention to. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, this commandment existed pre Mosaic law. Yeah. And that's always interesting to me that this is already a standard humanity yeah, st- standard that, that was set, that, that rhythm of, of seven days and on the, on the seventh day that, that he rested. Right. So. so I just think it's a helpful explanation of why it's so important. And yeah. And also a very helpful um, understanding that it's how important it is. Yes, yep. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure you know the answer to this one, but what does the word Sabbath mean? Well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, yeah, there's, there's a so range of meat. The Sabbath day is holy day, is the first definition. The second, day, the second one would be uh, seventh day, and then another one would be uh, Saturday. Well, what was that last one? Saturday is another one. Yeah, and then uh, one, one that I'd add there is rest. Like, just rest. The, like the, yeah, yeah. Rest. yeah, like the, the, very, the very basic definition that we would see of, of Sabbath is rest. So why, why is the last day known as the Sabbath? Well, because it is a, a day of, of rest. And so, you know, when we're talking about the, the Sabbath and, and trying to define it, I, I know it's easy for us to, to get into the idea that Sabbath is specifically just a day of the week, like Saturday or, or Sunday, which, because of the rhythm that God set up, it, it did become that, but it became that because of the purpose of the day. The function is restfulness. So, yeah. And sometimes we, we kind of differ in our, in our understanding of that too because it's not like God got tired out. He never took the day. Yeah. Yeah, I like what you're, you're saying there. So, so rest, well, you know, why were they resting? They weren't resting because... God got tired out. He completed his thought that he was doing. Yeah, he completed. So, so why did God stop what he was doing? He was on a roll. Why did he stop? It was finished. It was, finished. It was good. Yeah. Cap? And the connection there, I wonder if I ever worked out something specified, which is a festival day for us. It is not like a proper, you sit and look at the calendar and don't move your hands well. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and uh, you bring up a great point, and I, and I love it too, that it says, a festive day of rest. Uh, festive and restive, but yeah, festive day of, of rest. And this is something where, uh, this was uh, maybe a month ago, um, when, when we were going through, when we were going through, uh, the, I think it was in, in Leviticus, and, and looking at the, it was either Leviticus or, or, or Exodus, when it was talking about the Sabbath, and and was describing it as a solemn day. And, and I was noticing that, that some, some English translations said solemn, 
Some said festive. I was like, what? Because <laughs> like, when you think of solemn, what, what comes to mind? Somber. Somber, all right. What, what else comes to mind? Henny, Henny, did you say something? Quiet. Quiet, yeah. Boring. Boring. <laughs> yeah, it, is, it does. When you think solemn, do you think joy? No, probably sorrow. I can think of like Good Friday. Yeah, yeah. That that is that is you know that that is our modern sense of, of solemn is very very hardwired into to what Good Friday is is going to include. Now how about festive? What comes to mind when you think of festive? Joy, happy. Joy, happy. I saw a party twirling hands. Yeah, Kiva. What do you think when you think of festive? Holiday. Holidayish. Yeah, that's a really good, good word. That is it really tied into it. Sienna? Yeah, yeah, because if you have a, like a big festival or a party, you're going to be tired out by the end of the, the day, and so then maybe you, you will need a, a nap. But, okay, how... how how come some of our Bibles describe, you know, in, in the same verse, some describe the Sabbath as solemn and some describe it to be festive? Well, this is where it's good for us to be able to use more than one version of the Bible and, and trusting the fact that the Holy Spirit protects his translations. And so it's not that one is right and one is wrong. They are all, you know, linguistically, they, they are all valid translations of it, but really like so solemn and festive. And so I looked into it, and, and solemn, you know, comes from the, comes from the, the Latin solus annuus, if I remember correctly, but it's, um, but it, it's, it's a way of, of saying only annually. So solemn is, is the, a term that they use to describe special events that only happened once a year. And, and so they, they were, they were festivals. These were great parties in, in which, you know, you would wait for them all year round. So like you might wait for your birthday or you might wait for Christmas or you might wait for something that only comes once a year and it was a time of great festivity. It was a time of joy. And so then they, they saw that, you know, it was, it was kind of broadened out to, to just mean days that are set aside, that you, you wait for. You wait for these these celebrations but in in the beginning the word solemn meant festive in the beginning solemn meant celebratory but a celebratory that you don't get to have every day this is a celebration so good that it only comes at special times that's what solemn meant in the beginning but this is where we see how language changes over time um, solemn you know that people People took from that word solemn as, you know, the, this is a festivity that is reserved for special moments. And then over time, the emphasis became less on the celebration and more on the reserved. And then as that sense of reserve started being developed, then, you know, because it was the idea of, well, yeah, let's, let's, let's save these good things for Sunday, and so they started thinking solemn is, all right, saving, let's do less, let's not do this, let's not do that. And then after a while, just became thinking of, when we say solemn, it means you don't do the, you don't do the good things. You don't do the celebratory things. And then that got shifted over from the other six days to them being Sunday. If Sunday is the solemn day, then Sunday is the day that we're reserved. We do less, we celebrate less, we express less. But that's not what the word in the Hebrew was, was meant to be. The word in the Hebrew is festive. It is, it, is, it is a celebration that you don't get to have on any other day. It is a celebration that happens on the special feasts, that, you know, like the week-long feasts, like the Passover week, or the other celebrations or on the Sabbath day, which was meant to be a day of rest. So I know that's, you know that's not exactly what I was just talking about from the catechism itself, but just that I like the fact that it's brought out is that you know, our catechism teaches that it is meant to be 
festive. It doesn't say it's meant to be sad and boring. It doesn't say that. It says it's meant to be festive. Justin. Yeah, yeah, that, that idea of, of separation, set, setting something aside. Yeah, and so one, one of the ways that, that we as God's people set ourselves apart from the rest of the, the world is by setting that day aside when, when others can be like, well, you know, why, why don't you use this day to go out and do this, you know? Why don't, why don't you want to go? Like, I, I know in, in, the, in the last time that we were in, there was a lot of kids who were involved in traveling sports leagues and they had to like be like it's like well can can my kids be involved in this traveling sports league because they do a lot of games on on sunday and when the kids say i'll play but i can only play on saturdays those kids definitely stood out from the rest of the team don't you think so yeah when, when we set a day one one day a week uh, that sets us apart from from the rest of society I, i'd agree with that yeah honey Yeah, so I'll go to Isaiah 58. Uh, and w which verses were you saying? Beginning with, 13. Beginning with 13. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing what you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So this is, uh, I know I, I preached once on, on the Sabbath you know, in my previous church and talking about how it's meant to be a day of, of joy, a joy in the word of the Lord, a joy in the promises of Jesus Christ, uh, but it is meant to be a day of joy. And, and someone took part of that um, and gave me a nice anonymous letter, you know, saying, you know, if, if you, you know, decease from doing what you please on the, on the holy day, you know, if, or, you know, <laughs> like that, that idea of trying to, to point out uh, in the, the letter, uh, I didn't read the whole thing because just for the record, I don't try to read anonymous letters, but it was, but someone was trying to, to make the, that point of, you know, no, the Sabbath day is not meant to be a day of delight, but if you look at that context, it's like, no, 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 no. It's saying the, I know what you think is going to fill you with delight. I know the kind of delights that you pursue the other days of the week. But on this day, you must come and feast on my delights. You must come and see my truth. And see that the joy that I have for you is greater than the joy that you seek based on your own appetites, based on your own hunger. Because when, when, you, when you find the Sabbath day to be your delight, as opposed to our own, you know, our, our own earthly definitions of delight, then what is the, the result? Then we will find joy in the Lord. <laughs> it'll, it'll, you know, he will cause us to, to triumph. He will cause us to, to feast. And so it's that idea of, of is, does, when we say the, the Sabbath is given to us as a, as a time to delight in God's creation, does that mean Oh, the, the things I didn't have time to do on, on the other days of the week. Now I'm going to do all, all my own selfish projects on, on Sunday. Is that what it is? No, that's not what we're talking about. You know, that's, that's not, the, that's not what's, what's the, the pleasure that we want to seek. It is, as the Catechism rightly points out, you know, just how much of this is about the Word of God. That's why it's a rest. That's why it's a feast. That's why it's a joy, because this is the day that we set time aside to open up God's word more so than any other day of the week. So Cohen, I see you have got your hand up. I have a Yeah, well, yeah, you, you bring up a, the, the very right and true truth that 
Uh, we are never going to be able to completely stop doing evil until Jesus comes back and, and makes us you know, totally complete. Um, but I, I think what it is is pointing out the, the intention. Now, this is, this is the goal, that, that we are to strive to rest from, to strive to resting from, from evil, strive to, to live as, as Christ would live. Are we going to do it perfect? No. And thanks be to, to God that he sends us Jesus Christ to be that fulfillment for us. Uh, but, but I do like the, the, the catechism with that, that second day and that, or the, the, the second part of that Lord's Day and, and the emphasis there that, that the fourth commandment is not just about the Sabbath day and that one day out of the week. Because, you know, the, the look at the fourth commandment says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And then it says, six days you shall labor and do all your work. So that's part of the fourth commandment as well. It's not just the seventh day, but the six days. On the six days, we are to work for the Lord. It happens to be that the seventh day is a day where we rest in the, the Lord. Yeah, and so it says, on it you shall, shall do no work, neither you nor your son, your daughter, your manservant, or maidservant, nor your animals, or the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that's in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So the emphasis is on the seventh day, but it does include that commandment of what we do with the other six days. So what, what else would we draw from, from Scripture as, as we're thinking about the, the Sabbath? Yeah, Justin? Matthew 12? All right, so Matthew 12, so wh which verses in Matthew 12? Uh, well, it's 1 through 10. Kind of have to be all there, it's all in one place. Yeah, well, that works. So one, 1 through 10. So at that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, began to pick some heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. He answered, Haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and he and, he and his companions ate of the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read that in the law that the priests on the Sabbath duty in the temple desecrate the Sabbath and yet are innocent? I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned in, in you would not have condemned the innocent, for the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. Going on from that place, he went into their synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there, looking for a reason to bring charges against Jesus. But they asked him, "Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath?" And he said to them. If any of you has a sheep and it falls into the pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out and was completely restored, just as sound as the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. So there we go. So this is a great teaching coming directly from Jesus on, on the value of the Sabbath and and how, how does that apply? Um, well, one, I think you see him pushing away from legalism here. Yes. Because he's not giving us rules and regimen things that we have to do in a line. Yeah, he's push, pushing against legalism. He's, right. he's trying to push... Secondly, Yeah. Saying, well, he wasn't killed for what he did here, so how can you point someone here to be, you know, pointing their error out, more or less? Yeah, seeing that, that David David broke the technical rules, or he even right. thought it was interesting. Cohen, this kind of brings it back into what you're asking about pastors to see how the, the priests were technically breaking the, the Sabbath day when, right. when, when they were doing the, their, their work in, in the temple, but we see that, they, that their work, even though it was technically breaking the rules, was... Right regarded as as innocent and so that's where it's kind of like understanding the difference between the letter of the law and the in the spirit of the, the law because yeah. Uh, uh, yeah because there is 
Yeah, because I don't think he said it in this passage, but there's another place um, where there's uh, one of the other one of the other gospels when when you have the the Pharisees are criticizing the disciples for for picking grain on the Sabbath day. It's like you know the the, the man was not made for the Sabbath, but Sabbath for for the man, mm-hmm. and so it shows us that you know the emphasis is that it is meant to be a day of restoration. It is meant to be a day of delight. Now. If if you're, if you're starving and you don't have any food, is, is it a burden to grab the food that is, that is on the stalk and eat it? I, I wouldn't say that's a burden. I'd say that it's joy. If you are going hungry, you know, then, then you do the, then, then it is not a burden at that point. And that's, that's where I, I think it's, it's worth making a distinction between the idea of work and toil. We are called to not toil on the, the Sabbath day. Um, but, you know, if, like I said, with the example of, of needing food or ex- the example of a sheep that, that has fallen, like, is it a burden to rescue your sheep? No, like, that, that is something you want to do. That is a, a good thing to, to do. Was it wrong to heal on the Sabbath? Well, technically it was work, but was it toil? No, it was an act of, of joy. And, uh, and this is where what's also useful in this conversation is that we see that that Jesus is descri- de- described as the Lord of the Sabbath. Or we see in, in Hebrews, um, I'm forgetting which, which chapter it is, um, I think it's 9 or 10, but it talks about Jesus is the Sabbath. And it helps to open up our, our understanding of the Sabbath, is that it's, the Sabbath is not specifically a day of the week, although we are called to remember it one day out of the week. But the Sabbath is this sense of, of rest. Or, as Gary, like, like you were talking about, that, that, that God stopped creating. Why? Because his work was complete. And so what, what, I, what has opened my, my understanding to the Sabbath that was pointed out to me in, in seminary is that, that our, our notion of the Sabbath ties back to our created status and points forward towards our redeemed status in Jesus Christ. Because when you went to the Garden of of Eden, in that whole time that they were in the Garden, it was a Sabbath. You know, it it was a Sabbath because there was no toil. Now, they were called to work in the Garden, but there was no toil because the curse had not come yet. Everything that they did was an act of worship. Everything that they did was an act of, of joy. There was no quote-unquote work in that burdensome sense that was there. And when Jesus Christ comes back, he restores the, the world. He, who is our Sabbath and comes back, he will restore Sabbath on earth. Where again, there will be no more toil. There will be no more burden. And the work of Jesus Christ will be finished. And so we'll enter into that notion of the seventh day again. Gary? Yeah. Yeah, since, since, he's, since he is the Lord of the Sabbath, it is meant to be about him. It's not meant to be about rules. It's not meant to be about regulations. Although proper rules and proper regulations can aid us in, in our worship, but we need to get our priorities straight. <laughs> you, know, the, the, you know, he is the Sabbath. He is the reason for the Sabbath, as, as you're rightly saying, and, and we need to make the day about him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so this is, and so I, I, as you, I believe you're, you're rightly pointing out is that it's, it's, it's not about legalism. It's not about rule making and rule breaking. But it is, is meant to be about joy. And where does, where does our joy come from? It doesn't just come from a day off from work. It comes from a feasting in, in the promises of, of Jesus Christ, and that they will be fulfilled when Christ comes back again. And so it's, that's where it's helpful for us to think of Sabbath is not necessarily a day. Sabbath is a state of being that is, that is rooted in Jesus Christ. And when we understand it in that way, then, then it makes sense on, on, 
on what we are, are supposed to do and not supposed to do on the Sabbath day. Because if, because if the Garden of Eden was a Sabbath and the return of Jesus Christ will be a Sabbath, then what we do on this day out of the week is meant to be a practice for what life will be like when Jesus Christ comes back again. Yeah. 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 So you're you're bringing up a, a good point of just trying to make sure that people aren't hearing what what we're not saying or people. Yeah. Anyway, the um, but but it, does that mean that? Well, yeah, yeah. It you know Sundays aren't really the best day for me. You know, I I'll, I'll make it Wednesdays because I don't have to work and then I I can just get away from people and I can just kind of do my own thing. So I'm going to make Wednesdays my Sabbath day. Well, then. If that's the way that, that we interpret it as, you know, what works best for me, then A, we're forgetting the fact that it's about the Lord of the Sabbath, it's about Jesus Christ, and that, you know, as the, as the, the catechism points out for us, and there's a lot of scripture to go with it, that it is meant to be the gathering of God's people. So it's not just any rest, but it is a resting with the people of, of God. And it is a is about that that feasting on on his word together, and so that's where I hear some people say it's like, well, you know, I, I I'm a Christian and and I read my Bible on my own, but I don't have to go to church because Jesus died for me, and church going to church isn't what's going to save me. It's like, well, I'm I'm partially with you. Like going to church is not the thing that saves you, but you know, but we have been commanded by our Savior to gather together with his people for the sake of, of, of worship. And, uh, and if we do that apart from, from God's people, um, then we're going to miss out on, on the, the feasting, the revelation of his glory that happens within his people. So Justin, you got your hand up there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so you're, you're saying if you had a group of believers that wanted to get together on a Wednesday and make that a, a, the, the, the time of, of their, their holy day, their, their time of worship, you wouldn't have a problem with, with that. Um, because then we're getting into that whole thing with Saturday as the Sabbath day. Yeah. And we start getting into that argument. And then... Yeah, so, so this is where, like, the, the, the general concept, I, I would agree with you, um, but I, I would give a caveat, is, is the sense that um, the emphasis is on the gathering of, of God's people to, 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 to worship him, to come around his word, to study to, together. That is where the weight of the emphasis is. And I love the fact that, that our catechism, the answer really puts the weight on that, that aspect of it. Um, the slight pushback that I would give is that if people could do that on Sunday, they should do it on Sunday. Uh, if, but again, like this is where it's like, Let's say we're talking about a group of doctors and nurses or, you know, what, whatever it is where you, you have people who can't work, you know, who aren't able to, to do that on Sundays effectively if they find another day. I'm, I'm not going to see that as being irreverent for them to do. But this is where, like you were saying, it's like, we don't necessarily want to get into the whole, you know, it is sa it's Saturday the Sabbath or Sunday or what is it? But this is, is uh, just the, the shortened version of it is when we see in the New Testament is that when Jesus Christ is, is resurrected and he begins, you know, that, that first pivotal moment of the new Sabbath, what day of the week does that happen on? The first day. Not the last day, but the first day. So it's on, on Sunday. And, and we see in, in Paul, as he was gathering together with, with the, the believers, as he was teaching the believers, he, we see in a couple instances that he was gathering with them on the first day of the week. And when we see Pentecost taking place, what day of the week does, does that take place? We see that taking place on, on Sunday. And so what we see is, is you know, throughout the, we see this, this rhythm in the New Testament of the first day of the week 
being you know, regarded as, as that day of assembling and gathering together and, and the day in which Jesus Christ makes these pivotal moments take, take place. And so that's why I say, like the emphasis, I'd agree with you, is, is on, it's on the, the gathering of God's people around God's word and Christ's promises. But if you can do it on a Sunday, then, then I would encourage you to, to do that on, on, on Sunday because that is the pattern that we, we say, see started, um, you know, in the New Testament. And, uh, yeah, and I, I know, like, we, we've, we've, we've got friends where we've, we've had great long conversations on Saturday, Sunday, and, and other things like that, but, um, yeah, just a little background. What, if, if Jesus, again, during his time on earth, if, if he worshipped on Saturday, why do we do it on Sunday? Ever, ever since, ever since the, the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ, the Christians gathered on, on Sunday, and, and we've got lots of historicity to, to back that, that up. So, but, all right. Um, yeah, for sake of time, you know, we, we can close here, but I'll just say, say again, if, if you're trying to think about what should I and should I not do on the Sabbath, um, the most helpful test that, that I have heard is that question of if, if our Sabbath day, if our Sundays is meant to be a practicing for the new creation, then you think to yourself, when Jesus comes back, would I be doing that in the new creation? Oh, it's an interesting conversation, an interesting thought exercise right there. Would I be doing this when Christ come, comes back? Because when Christ comes back, would we get together with other believers and sing? I certainly believe so. Would we study God's word? I certainly believe so. You know, would we be working in our garden as an act of joy? Well, when you go back to the Garden of Eden, it seems like, you know, for, for Adam and Eve. There's a song. What's that? There's a song. There, there's, in the garden. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, the, the song In the Garden, yeah. Yeah, in, in the garden, we, we sing that. And so, like, that's, that's where it's like, you know, this is where it's like, you think it's like, okay, well, maybe not all of us are going to be gardeners. Maybe for some of us, gardening is, is not going to be an act of celebrating, you know, the, the creation of, of God. And I don't know, for maybe some of you brothers who, who've spent a lot of time working in, in, in people's lawns, maybe you will or will not be doing, I don't know. But, but it's, it's that, that idea of, will it be, a burden, an act of, of toil, or will it be an act of, of joy? Uh, and and like, because the idea is we want to make our Sundays as much like the new creation as possible. And there are very practical ways of, of doing that. And some things are going to be like, like we, we try to emphasize Sundays as our leftover days. You know, so that way you don't have to make a big meal. So you can just, you know, throw it in the microwave and you know, just... Eat. You don't have to do, do the work. What if you're someone who, for you to work in the kitchen, is an act of great joy? Okay, you know, maybe we can, we can talk about that one. But it's, but it's, you know, but it's, it's, it gets really complicated in terms of splitting hairs. Of what's the difference between toil and, and a work of worship? We're not going to be able to unpack that all <laughs> right now. But at least that starting place. Will you be doing it when Jesus comes back? We don't know for certain until he does come back. But that's a, that's a thought exercise I encourage you to do. All right. Gary? Yeah, crock pot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that, 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 and that is a, a great tool, and that's, that's a, a lot of wisdom. And that's where it's like, you know, I, I try... To, to the best of my abilities to make sure that the sink is empty on, on Saturday night and then you know, don't, I don't, tr don't try not to wash anything. I'm sorry if that upsets you. I don't, I don't think it does. <laughs> but, uh, try not to wash anything until Monday morning. And Monday morning, you know, the sink looks really bad. <laughs> so that's one of the first things we need to do is make up for it. But it's just the idea of like, you know, cleaning dishes is toil for me. Maybe you disagree with me, and, you know, God bless your soul if, if that is a joy for you to clean dishes, but for me it's a toil, and so I try to do none of that on, on Sundays. And so, yeah, it's just it's that, that thing of, like, the crock pot. 
Do that work on Saturday. You do as much work on Saturday as you can so that all of Sunday, as much as it is possible, is for celebrating. Celebrating around the Word of God, the person of Jesus Christ, and celebrating with each other. Celebrating with a nap or good food or this or that or, you know, just going for a great walk or whatever it is. But it's meant to be a celebration, a feasting in God's goodness for us. So, all right, let me close this here with a prayer. So, Father, we recognize that we don't really fully grasp what your Sabbath is like because we have not seen it face to face yet, and yet we are eager for that day. And so as we wait for the fullness of the Sabbath that comes when your Son comes again, let us try to get little tastes of its glory and its joys in the way that we worship you. Oh, we, even though we, we don't have all the I's dotted and the T's crossed as well as you would, let us always grow in the way that we honor you and show you the reverence you deserve with our worship. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, my friends, uh, chance to be praying for people. I, I know uh, one person that, that comes to mind that we were, didn't pray for this morning is uh, Leroy. I found out that, that he, uh, he broke a, a rib, uh, uh, or he broke one of his, his ribs uh, a little over a week ago. And so, uh, yeah, I've broken or at least bruised a rib before. I know that's, that's not a comfortable thing, and so we can be, be praying for, for his, his recovery. Justin? Um, pray for Simeon uh, with his court date this week. Yeah, so Simeon has his court date. Is it oh, Thursday. Thursday. Okay, yeah. I couldn't remember if it was Thursday or Friday. So, And I know in his conversations... Yeah, one o'clock if, if they want to go in to court. Oh, what, what time was that? One o'clock. One o'clock? Yeah, it's, I don't know how many people they let in there and stuff, but... Yeah, I don't know with COVID, but... I know that he would appreciate the support that you're doing right now. Yeah, yeah, that kind of support. So Thursday, one o'clock. And, and the last I heard with his conversations with, with his lawyer, that things are really optimistic, that right. he believes that there's a good chance that he could get completely thrown out. Um, if not that, then he might just spend a, a week in jail. But he, his lawyer said that he would... He would he would be willing to, to stake his license on the fact that it would not be more than a, than a month. But the worst case scenario, according to the, the statutes, is that he could spend up to uh, a year in, in jail. And so we want to be, be praying that, um, that justice happens. You know, whatever, whatever justice in the eyes of God looks like through this instance, that that, that is, is what takes place. Um, so, yeah, be, be praying for, for, uh, for Simeon. Uh, so I, I was mentioning Leroy, but then I also know, um, so, so Joyce, your, your friends, um, so, so Derek is his name, right? That Derek, Derek also, he, he, he fell, and, and he, he's, he's a bit bruised up, but he fell off a, a ladder this, was it yesterday or just this last week? Yesterday. And so, uh, so he's, sounds like, overall, he's good, just feeling sore, but still want to be praying for, for his recovery. All right. And who else can we be lifting up in our prayers? Yeah, Vince? All right. So you said a, a friend of yours, Kathy, was, was diagnosed with, with breast cancer, and it's a reoccurrence of, uh, of a former condition that she had, but uh, that was discovered this, this week. And so that is going to be hard news for her, I'm, I'm sure, and they're trying to make plans on those, those next steps. Um, yeah. yeah. Who else can we be lifting up in our prayers? All right, how about putting prayers into to action? Uh, would someone like to, to follow up with, with Leroy, give, give him a little bit of encouragement? Yeah, all right, thank you, thank you Debbie, appreciate that. 
and then uh, I know with, with Simeon, we've, we've been trying to the work with, with Simeon. Um, yeah, I'd be curious to see if, if they'd be able to have, have uh, anyone come and, and visit, you know, for it. Okay. But I don't know how much he actually knows about rules and COVID. Yeah. I mean, anything in the past is probably a lot different now. So. Yeah. He remembers. Yeah, remember. yeah. Yeah. So if God puts that on, on your heart to, to be there to, to help and encourage him, um, let me know and we can try to find out more of the, the specific location of, of where that's at. But. No, we've, we've been trying to, to help su- support him, and, and we, like I said, we pray for, for justice to, to happen. And then, uh, and then we've got Derek, who, who's a bit sore after falling off a ladder. What, what, is there a way that, that we can be an encouragement to, to, to him? Yeah, Joyce? You can send him a card. You can send him? Okay, yeah. We appreciate that. Kiva, I saw you, you had your hand up there. Yeah, yeah, give him a gift. Yeah, we can give him a gift of it. Sounds like we can give him a gift of a of a nice card. But no, that is very thoughtful of you. And then, uh, and then with 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 your your friend Kathy, I don't know what 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 her condition is is quite like. But uh, can you think of a way that that we might be able to to step in and be a blessing for her right now? Okay. Yeah. Well, well, we'll be praying for her, but it, but if you can think of a of a tangible way that that we can be uh, a support for her, uh, let us know. But uh, prayers are, are not a small thing that, that we can offer on her behalf. Uh, well, let's let's turn turn our thoughts to the Lord. So, Father, we we thank you for the ways that you are always with us and watching over us and protecting us and. And we pray for, for Leroy and for Derek as, as they both recently experienced some injuries that are leaving them feeling sore. We ask that you, you help them to, to regain their, their strength and, and healing quickly, that they will not feel too much discomfort and that they're able to, to do their, their work well. We pray for, for Simeon with, with his, his court appointment on, on Thursday. And, and God, we don't know everything about the legal system and, and everything that, that took place, but, but we pray that, that you who sees and knows all things and, and who delights in justice, uh, we pray that, that, that what is true justice would come as a, as a result of, of that court appointment. And if, if there are ways that, that we as, as brothers and sisters can, can give support to, to Simeon, help us to... to, to to be that, that encouraging presence for him. But, but Father, we, we are grateful to, to see that over the, these uh, many months of, of, a, of a friendship that this church has had with Simeon, the, the ways that, that he is, is growing in his, his knowledge and his, his delight in, in your word, and, and we are thankful for that. Uh, Lord, we also pray for, for Kathy as she has uh, a, a redevelopment of, of breast cancer. And so there are going to be a lot of discussions and treatments and plans that are going to need to happen for her. But uh, we know that at this point, uh, this news must be devastating for her. And, and emotionally, this is difficult. And so, Father, we, we pray that you would provide a, a comfort that comes from your word and from your promises and from your family. Uh, help us to, to be a support to her if, if there are any means possible. Lord, we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. So now, my friends, I invite you to stand as we recite together the unifying words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above you. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And my friends, as we get ready to leave, we go with this blessing from the Lord in number six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Let's go now together in his peace.